Hey. Hi, Brian. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm just gonna switch my to my LTE signal because my Wi-Fi out here sucks. Mm, it's not doing it. Hold on. I'll be back in a sec. Whoop. I'm back. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is better. There you are. I'm just Excellent. like Excellent. Yeah. I'm out in my like little it's like we have lousy my, internet here. Yeah. My girl I'm like in the back of my garage, like the previous owners. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. The previous owners like built that a little, little garage studio. space. Yeah, yeah. How is that? I'm still not getting good. Mm. Yeah. How is this? Yeah. Is this okay? Can you hear me? Is it, is it jumpy? Yeah. It's jumpy? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I'll try the other, the internet. I want to stay out here. It's, uh, it's so nice out here. It looks nice. Yeah. Looks let's go. Sun it's like sunny. Oh. Yeah. How's this? Better? Good. So far. Keep talking. All right. I'm like, this is our test. Thanks for being here early. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it seems good. All right, seems good. good. Maybe it's because it's a little later in the day. Um, yeah, uh, it's got a little, it's got like a little overhead fan and skylights. It's like nice and airy. Yeah. And uh, that's really nice. It is really nice. And I was renting it to an artist for the last couple of years. And, and then uh, Alejandra moved in and I didn't need to have the artist anymore. And he found a new studio. So I've got to take it over again. Yay. Yay. Nice home office space. Yeah, I guess like. like leave the house and like walk across the deck and and get away from the, the house a little bit, which is nice. Yeah. Separation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you yeah. get to retire yet? No. No, but I'm only 80% time now. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> You're making I'm big easing. moves towards your, your easing. A little bit. Uh -oh. That's good. Um, and then you got... Yeah. I think, I think, I didn't, I think not everybody voted, but I think everybody would be happy to have you on the ink board. Well, if not, I'll leave, but that's no, 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 of course, no. And I, I, I need you on the ink board. We need to, you need to, you and I need to have a meeting and discuss what we're going to do about, uh, Lack of about money. making Steve <laughs> halftime or something. Oh yeah. Okay. We're going to talk about staff and, and like, you know, we're gonna, and we have to have a real talk about projection and, Mm -hmm. or not be able to well, have go ahead oh go ahead oh if we're not able to have trans performance or first night and have no event tickets revenue we're gonna have a we're gonna have a difficult time to say the least yeah um yeah can you do either of those online yeah but you can't sell tickets to things online but you can get sponsors still yeah i you know i i just um we're thrown together. I was going to talk about it in the meeting, but you're, since you're hanging out, I basically, I worked for the last couple of weeks on putting together protocols so we can have like actual summer park series mm -hmm. in Pulaski park, but like super limited. Mm -hmm. And I did everything. And then like on when last this past Wednesday, like I had my meeting with the mayor and he was on board. And then on Friday, like I had a meeting with Meredith and she was not on board. So mm -hmm. Meredith O'Leary is now basically in charge of the city. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. And she's in charge yeah. of us too, I think. So. Yeah, she's, yeah, right. I think she's, this is what she's been waiting for. Kathy Service! It's Kathy Service. Hi, Kathy Service. Hi, Meredith. Oh, God. I there just, you are. Yeah. I just, le I was at the oh, ER, oh. at the ER, my, my, you know, my friend Bruce was admitted, so I spent most of like three hours in the ER. So I'm like, I gotta get there. I'm the, I'm the secretary. Well, he was. He was <laughs> oh, let me just get my dog out from the porch. Oh, I'll let him upstairs. Hey, kids. Can, uh, <laughs> Wait, are you the senior? Are you the senior of the? Are you the oldest, eldest? Freeman? I don't know. I, I'm 71. Huh? I think you you're older than be. I am. That makes me happy. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> When's your birthday, Freeman? November. November what? November 22nd. Oh, oh my you know 1949? 1948. 48. I'm 1950, baby. Oh. Mm. Yeah, a kid. A baby. Yeah. A fellow Sagittarian? Yeah, I'm on the cusp. Oh, yeah, because there's a couple. Yeah, we there's a few of us Sages. Yep. <laughs> Me, yeah. Happy Service, Peter McQuillan. Peter and I have the same birthday. Well, not oh, the same so, year. So cool. Um, you know, what's weird about this. What's weird about this is that I spend so much time. We spend so much time, right? I mean, looking at each other in school, right? I mean, everything. The other night we watched uh, Hamilton, you know, and, oh, and uh, which was fabulous. I mean, what what a great. I mean, to to be able to see it that way with the multiple cameras, that was. That was amazing. And then there was a follow-up discussion, which was also interesting with the actors and uh, um, Robin Roberts, I think she was the, the facilitator. And that was also fascinating, but you know, it was that same setup, just like we have here with- Wow. Square. And you know, they're such great performers, but they were also, the discussion was, was recent. It was done recently. It was about reflecting on what it was like when they first pro produced and performed and what it's like now seeing it in these times. Oh my God, you're it's really, it was very interesting, very provocative. Have you followed this show? I think you can, you know, it's on Disney Plus. Yeah. And fortunately, yeah. our son, we our son has it. it. We have the other half to watch. It really made me want to be at the live performance more than ever, seeing yeah. that. Right. I need to see it. <laughs> how brilliant, but how brilliant, right? I mean, how incredibly brilliant and, and incredibly well presented. I mean, just what a great. Yeah. That rewind. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Really, I haven't seen it yet, but I look forward to seeing it when I have a chance. Oh, yeah, by all means, everybody should. Mm. Um, Kathy Service, hi, Ellen yeah. Freeman. I just wanted to say hi, hello. everybody. Yeah, um, did you get my emails from Ellen? Ellen, yes, just I got part. Ellen's. Okay. I just saw so that. I'm not a voting one. member right now. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, Eamon. <laughs> Hi. Well, he really gets around. I know. He's, he's just a man of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dining by yourself, though. Hi. Uh, well, well, you know, you, just so you know. If you're the best company you have, <laughs> that's what you're <laughs> yeah, that's, I know what that's like. The <laughs> best the bread looks company. good. Hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alan Schneider is not going to re. Be reappointed. I just sent you oh. that email. Okay. Um, he thinks he has too many conflicts of interest. Oh, okay. But okay. He, he, it, I mean, his, his term is up, so he's just not going to. Uh, yeah, he's not. Re he's not getting reappointed. Okay. Um. So, but he's going to still do lots of volunteering for us, which is great. Okay. He's going to be yeah. active, but he's just not going to be a voting member and be part of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Okay. And then uh, we have a new board member that is in the works. Oh, okay. Who is, uh, I don't know if Freeman has had a chance to have a conversation. I did. I, I had a brief with Matthew, you mean? Yep. Yeah, I had a brief conversation with him this afternoon. And he sounds enthusiastic. And, yep. um, you know, he. I guess he's just waiting for you know the paperwork to go you know process yeah. and he reached that. out to me i tell him i told him to do the paperwork and we had about a half hour conversation and i referred him to you and now he's trying to just get through the mayor hi danielle okay everyone okay <laughs> good can i call you back a little bit i like your little heart behind you 
will call you yeah. back. So this is from one of the kids who came into the museum. I just basically tried to recreate my work office at home. So these are all things that are up at work normally. Mm. This is by Naya Gabriel. Ooh. Who's one of the artists mentioned in the um, tonight's proposal. Oh. I worked on a project with her. Did Got some Louis Cavagnac up there. Oh, nice. You can see Invisible Fountain. Yep, yep. And then just like little little work things. My yeah. wall of post-it notes, aka dresser. Let's <laughs> 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 say everybody describe where they are. This is fun with the Zoom while we're waiting for people. Mm. Where are you, Kathy Murray? I'm in my bedroom, Brian. Okay. <laughs> it's where I conduct all my business. Scandalous. <laughs> 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 Kathy service where are you I'm in my living room and today I had a meeting about work and they said if I'm going to have geria I'm doing geriatric consultations so I'm going to have to take those nude figures off my wall and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> where's your doggy Kathy I never get to see your doggy Leon, Leon come here he was just here. I just oh, he's probably eating or sleeping. No, oh, not he, well. He will be, but I'm gonna come in. Let's go to say hi to Uncle Brian and everybody. Oh, hey, buddy! <laughs> he's so cute. He looks like Snowy. Snowy. <laughs> oh, that's a great name. <laughs> Jim, you're you, guys, guys, you guys know Tintin, right? Yeah. Yep. No, he definitely looks like. What's your dog's uh, name again, Kathy? Leon. 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 <laughs> Freeman, where are you? Uh, where are you? Uh, I'm in the back room that. Uh, nice. Yeah, that we have yeah, spent nice huge place. amounts of time in because of all the windows and the woods. And now is a beautiful time of year to be here. Mm. I like being outside. Yeah. Ellen, where are you? Are in the library? Uh, I'm in. I'm in our son's old bedroom. Oh, nice. Which is turned into my work room because my daughter and son-in-law have kind of taken over my old work room downstairs. So mm. I moved upstairs. Very yeah. good. And you're in Amon? <laughs> Where are you, Amon? Uh, I'm in my kitchen. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Um, Can we book a table? <laughs> What's that? Can we book a table? Yeah. That's very well, cool. Like, yeah, I'll, like, I'll, like, hold on one second. I'll undo it, and then you can see. Like, this is just a, re a really good spot for like the lighting and stuff. Oh, um, yeah. Um, how do I not do this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, wait. Is it up here? Maybe I can... A little more light. Uh, yeah, I don't know, even know how to turn it off. I use, I just use it all the time. Oh wait, here it is. <clears throat> oh. See. Ah. <laughs> so okay. Who else is? I'm just trying to get doing. I'm trying to get a head start on these minutes. So, right, doing the minutes as we're talking. So okay, I got everybody. You can also here. watch the video after. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to go through the board members to see what we need for. Uh, um, forum. forum, yeah, yeah. So I can, I can strike okay. through, and then Ellen, mm -hmm. yeah, and Kathy was. And Rachel is. Uh, would we find out anything about Rachel now yet in terms of what you know being? I know she's on the ink, but is she still on on the radio? I'm waiting for everybody to vote on that. So right now we got, so Rachel. I don't know if she's got back, and sh I was hoping she'd come on here, but I haven't heard anything from her either way. Oh, mm -hmm. can she be on ink? Yeah, she yeah. can. And you I'm just waiting for, I think Esther voted and George voted. And, and me. Then maybe, I think, oh, you did? Okay, so then she's yeah, definitely on ink now. The vote. Oh, and Stephen was there last week. We all voted yes. Okay, good. So I'll put her on the ink now. Mm -hmm. I'm in the, I'm in mm -hmm. there right now, so. Mm -hmm. So for membership, I'm putting Ellen is is now a non-voting member. Um, Correct. Um, okay, and Alan is not going to. He decide. You know, is not is not re 
getting reappointed. Uh, yeah, either. I forwarded you that email. When you have a, you know, after okay. the meeting, at some point, you can just take a look okay. at it. Okay. It's I'm long and nice, you. and he really liked, you know, he just wanted to give the regards okay. to everybody. He really okay. loved working with our board and the work he did, but he's, okay. again, he's going to still. So, and, Alan, and, Danielle and Eamon, Alan Schneider uh, is and, not going to extend his term um, because of all of the different businesses in the arts world that he has, and he's, he's worried about the conflict of interest issues. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I, that's totally, he's been worried about it for a while, so I feel yeah, like that. that's all right. That's fine. Um, and then um, uh, Sarah Gibbons, is she still on or what's up? Yeah, I'm going to have her resign. I like, I, she's, I guess she has her daughter on Tuesday yeah. nights and she can't have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's good just because if we're counting her for quorum, then that, you know. That would, yeah. I'll okay. send an email right now really quick. And then I guess we can get this meeting started. I haven't heard from anybody whether they could come. And Lori, Lori Steiner? Uh, she can't come tonight. Okay, that's fine. I'll just put it at regrets. Okay. I said her tenure was ending at the end of June also. Yeah, she's she just re-upped today. Okay. I got her in touch with the uh, with the clerk and she got oh, the application. Great. So she's probably okay, going to cool. be redesignated. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, cool. Excellent. All right, I just asked Sarah to re resign. I gave her a lot of different. Yeah, no, it's fine. You, I mean, it's really, it's in everybody's best interest. And she doesn't feel ba bad about missing meetings and stuff. So. Yeah, we had like six months of a lot of like good Sarah work. And then she went through that tumultuous stuff with her personal yeah. life. And she still hasn't is. really life, recovered from that. Yeah, life gets um, in the way. Sometimes. Yep. So I'm looking at the board. Uh, the board thing. Rachel's on there. That's awesome. And then we got Danielle. Danielle, I'm going to just, well, we, she still counts. One, two, three, four. Eight. We got eight. We're on the municipal board. Okay. And then here we only have one, two, three. we have four. Does that count? Oh, it doesn't have to be quorum, it has to be uh, so for eight. Oh, that's not even. I don't know what do you do for even numbers in Robert's rules. <laughs> um, let's see. What do you think? What is I can't hear you, Amen. You're you're muted. At that point, it's like rock, paper, scissors, right? Like oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiebreakers. No. Amen. We got Amen. Courtney is said she couldn't come. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, is Esther still? I think Esther's still on the municipal board, right? Yeah, she's on both. I understand. Yep. Yep. And then, oh, Kathy. Oh no, we have seven because Kathy is Murray's is now. Both. I'm not both anymore. <gasps> you no. aren't. No, no, my term expired on uh, the Arts Council, but I'm Arts Inc. Oh, okay, okay. So she's Kathy's going to stay in the Arts Inc. and she's going to join a different board for the city. So. Oh, really? Okay. Well, what are you going to? Oh, you applied for a, what something commission? Disability commission. Oh, really? Oh, good. Yes. Oh, I can talk to you about some things. And. <laughs> so we have a forum. Then. I forgot Excellent. that Kathy Murray. Uh, Okay. Not on the municipal board anymore. So okay, we good. Four, I got seven. So we can start our meeting. I think now we're not going to wait. It's seven fourteen. We're way late. I apologize. Okay. That's all right. We started. Yep. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. So I just wanted to start the meeting to say that this is a public meeting. It's being recorded by Zoom. The recording will be available tomorrow when I upload it on the Northampton Arts Council dot org website. Mm -hmm. um, has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes that I sent out from last meeting? That was done by Courtney and Kathy. Our mm -hmm. courts. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Is there any amendments, edits, or corrections that we need to register? Anybody missing that I missed or? <laughs> um, can I have a motion from one of the voting board members to approve the minutes as uh, shared with the board uh, from our meeting on June 23rd? 
2020. Uh, I moved to approve them, but I wasn't present at the meeting. So. Oh, goodness. And. All right, all in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Wait, we have, oh, because Ellen's not on the board either, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it. So we let, okay, so we don't have, we don't have a quorum then. Forgot that Ellen is not, because we're missing, we got one, two, oh. three, four, five, six, seven, and we only have three in attendance, so never mind. So I'll just table the minutes okay. uh, from last meeting. And we might have to have an emergency meeting at some point to talk about this proposal, but we might as well keep it going. Okay. Okay. So um, Okay. So we table the minutes from the June 23rd meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can okay. go right to um, public art. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just two things we could talk about. Uh, one of them was the public arts festival. We can do a little recap. You know, we sent out a press release. I think I shared it with everybody. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was helpful. That was also helpful for the minutes. <laughs> um, and then you've seen, I don't know if you've been downtown, but you've seen the work that was produced mm -hmm. downtown. Great. They uh, look good. And Are you getting any comments on that? Yeah, everybody, there's a lot of feedback. There's only, there's only two uh, difficulty, I had two difficult interactions with the owner of Fitzwillie's. Oh, he wanted God. somebody his own person to do it. And that wasn't his fault because yeah, we... yeah, somebody told him that he could do it. And then the other thing was um, another artist in town who is well represented and well off was upset that I didn't choose that person to oh, God. Uh, yeah. them to do the, the thing. And I was, but I was it's fine. I gave them the, we need more diversity of artists and more diversity of people that are artists in our town. And he had no oh, response well. to that. No. Yeah. Well, well the old white guy with right. hundred thousand dollars in commissions of downtown work was, didn't have anything to say when I was like, Hey, you were well represented already. And Oh my God. Okay. Oh, really? Go on. Go Brian. <laughs> Radio. Brian. That's, that's the right response. Good. Good. He's lazy anyways with his communication. It was it was a pretty inflammatory email he sent me, which I thought was... Oh, God. Um, that's unacceptable. That's, no, that's yeah, it, was, it was terrible. It was, it was like not in the... And I was like at a party and I like get this email and I'm like, oh, I don't know why I checked my email, but I did. No, don't check emails when you're at parties. That's, yeah. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> Do you get hate now? How, how good was the party if you were checking your work email? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the... Well, I was trying to be socially distanced on the front porch. And I was also like in the middle of, when I'm in the middle of production stuff, I'm like on, I'm just mm. on, yeah. I'm, you know, trying to put out fires and mm. but whatever. It, everything went well. Uh, all the artists were fantastic to work good. with. Good. Um, we were, they were well supported by our staff and a bunch of volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, Working with Wayne communication wise was difficult, but his his um his assistant Tom Venice was like awesome. Oh good. He okay. Executed really well and got a lot of volunteers and working with him was excellent. Uh, He's great. I've worked with him. He's a wonderful guy. Um who oh, Tom? Okay. Yeah, yeah Tom. Wayne is just difficult with communication and then like execution and well uh he is, but not follow through. Uh, from Daniel, what is Wayne? He the, Wayne is director of planning and sustainability in Northampton. He's really good at getting grants, and he has a good vision. But he just is, does a lot of stuff unilaterally. Uh, vision, uh, which is my experience with him and how I got introduced to the board. Actually, uh, so he has a vision, and he doesn't want to compromise on how, what he wants to do. That's my. Well, that's a that's a difficult thing because it's not. This is. I mean, it's a city. It's not his. I know. That's the whole thing. Is like you know, everybody has a different philosophy and how they mm -hmm. they do their job. And his, you know, he has, you know, he's a really smart man, and he does really yeah. good work. And exactly. he's done really a lot of good things for the city. But there's, you know, when it comes to like public art, he has to have has different, you know. 
I have a different vision of how to like incorporate that in the well, city. So. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it's public. It's public, and that's that's the key. It's not. It's public, and that's that's the point. You it's know, not the gallery. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've already talked about. I, I, yeah. We there's, there's some history here with the board from a long time ago, but um, yep. so I had a little bit of difficulty on some communication pieces. But where I'm I'm working like I want to work work more with him. He's applied to a grant to paint more uh, more of the blocks downtown. And there is like a kind of a draft idea to have 85 more blocks placed downtown. Um, the grant only has uh, $5,000 for artists. So, and I have a couple artists in mind and, um, and then uh, myself and Romero. And one of them is Ryan Murray and he's a, uh, a person of color that was born in, in Northampton and raised here. And I worked with him before on the box. They painted the boxes and now he's only developed since he was like, when he like, we first worked with him when he was 17 and now he's been doing fresh paint and other um, mural work and his work looks fantastic. So Great. Oh, good. <laughs> once the money comes in from Wayne, I'm going to probably engage Ryan to do um, in front of Joe's. Oh, good. Those blocks there. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then we have some other, a list of other, um, other local mural artists that we want to work with, but I, okay. I'm just waiting for Wayne to like come through with the money because wow. I want him to do what he says. And like, you know, the one thing I, I counted on him to do, which was just to prime all the blocks and that got, that got done. And so that was, <laughs> that's the end of that conversation. So Hopefully the five thousand dollars comes through, and then I can maybe convince the the department to put some more money up. I need like about thirteen thousand dollars if we want to paint Joe and the rest of the planned eighty five blocks in downtown. And Where are they going to put those? God, the rest of them. I have no idea. And it's just you know, this is like I think uh, it's not actually going to be executed yet. I think it's a plan, and I think they want to do it. I think it's really, uh, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. They're only going to be up till November. I really think it's a cool pilot idea. Yeah, I to think see it's how, cool. to see how like a walking downtown would kind of work out. It doesn't look the best, but yeah. when in times of you know when it's yeah, you have to do yeah. It's a good um, you know alternative and and it puts things. It gives a, it gives something difficult. It, it puts some lemonade and you know instead of lemons or whatever that is. <laughs> It does, for, for locals, it does make it a pain in the ass to, like, go make a quick deposit at the ATM or, like, you know, run into some place, but I think, you know, we can... I'm trying to get downtown. It's like, I, I'm trying to avoid it now at all means. Um, Ryan, Ryan did, did Wayne, has Wayne <clears throat> said anything or have you heard anything about that whole plan they had for, um, you know, addressing... Uh, traffic issues in the road and the, the whole grant that they had for that they were going to put in place anyway um is is that still you know anything about that no basically my interaction with wayne is that we need these barriers painted yesterday do it as fast as you can mm. <laughs> well i have no money and i don't know how to do it oh god mm. and I was, okay well yeah. and you made it <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Okay. Right away, sir. No, no. What's what the mayor's office? I don't like Wayne has yeah, thrown me Wayne has thrown many things like that across my desk and I was like, do you have money? Do you have a plan? No, no. Okay. Well then you can figure it out yourself. Well good. I'm glad you say that. And you you have the board, you know, to, to back you up. I mean, and just make sure you use us because but when the mayor's office is involved, and I and I, I felt like it just worked because we canceled the public art festival, and I had that right. grant sitting there. No, it, it worked perfectly. It was good. Oh, it just was, you know, it was uh, it was just serendipitous, I think, and then it, it worked. Um, Brian, so, projects like this come up. Do we have the eligibility to like go to the mayor's department, mayor's office for funding? Or it's once weird a year, I can ask for funding, and so it has to be uh, way ahead of time. So I make a funding request to the mayor's office. There is some discretionary income if like emergency stuff comes up, and it's like between one and two thousand dollars. But I, you know, it's it's possible. But like the, these budgets are like worked on, you know, you know, way ahead of time. 
So I made my budget request in like February, March, and then I like, you know, I put together a budget and then I put together a narrative and then I present it and I share it with like the finance director. And then I have a meeting with the mayor and the chief of staff and the finance director. Um, Who's our finance director again? Susan Wright. Okay. I actually um, really like her. She's a, su she's a supporter of the arts. She's an artist herself and she's really oh, good Oh, I feel it. Did, would you she volunteer? What? Uh, did she volunteer or want to volunteer? Was somebody municipal wanted to volunteer for free? That was Terry Masterson. Okay. It was, no, it was a woman. A woman. I don't know if she ever did, but I think I remember somebody. She's like a fiber her. artist and uh, a knitter, and she likes okay. that. She's in that kind of world. Okay. She's really good cool. at it. So, but, you know, if there, we could ask for money, Danielle, but it would have to come out of some department's budget and my budget yeah. our budget in the arts and culture department is basically my salary the benefits for the whole staff first night money and then money for summer concert series and like whatever we do in the park and that's basically our budget which is about probably comes out to like seventy five thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. out of the fiscal budget and they've been you know now unfortunately with with everything that's going on, the budgets, I'm sure gonna, you know, there, there's little money to go around and it's um, it's queen for a day around that, that kind of thing, so. Um, well, I have been present on most of the city council meetings regarding the budget and there have been a lot of advocates to defund certain departments. And I guess I was just wondering if reallocation, I know that the, the city council, that the mayor's office is responsible for reallocation of funds that have been cut in certain places, and I would probably advocate maybe that they go to schools, but I was just like, if there's an extra $5,000 that's no longer being used in the police department budget, I guess I wondered if we would be like a consideration. I asked for $5,000 more before COVID because I wanted more money to, to, to do more public programming. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, they basically, during, it was before the reallocation. So I don't know, they haven't talked to me about since the change okay. in the budget. Um, but they basically, before that, they my request was denied during COVID because of like the lack of like uh, potential, um, all the different like revenue streams that the city council, mm -hmm. like the parking and the cannabis tax and the hotel and all that, those things were gone. So they basically said that I couldn't have that extra. They're still giving me $5,000 and like, so I got basically flat, I got like no change in my budget, the same as last year. It's really interesting because if you're following the budgets closely, other departments did propose and were not told to get rid of their increases. So like, I'm just happy that this is being recorded and this is open meeting law because what, what happened, what we are finding out happened is that our like the thing that we care about, the thing that we volunteer for, asked for a meager $5,000 increase mm -hmm. and that was flatline and rejected due to COVID, whereas other departments within our city requested $200,000, $300,000 increases and that was not rejected at all. So I think that's just a statement about some of our leadership priorities. And I know we've had yeah. a great experience working with the mayor and he's been supportive of our efforts, but Brian, if you ever see need for advocacy on city council budget meetings, mm -hmm. I have gotten very comfortable speaking to that board and would be happy right. to advocate for $5,000. I'm sort of outraged. I'm glad to know this, but I'm well, totally outraged. We have the, the, the difference between our board, like I have a very like uh, special position and then I get to be in the municipal and work in the ink and mm -hmm. our our entity as it exists now has the luxury of being able to raise funds from the local community yeah. a lot easier. So normally I don't really push the, the envelope and maybe I'm just saving up all this in for like a big ask of a capital project of maybe having some like artist in residency building or something. Mm, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. It doesn't need to be your ask, but like we as yeah. a board can be advocating yeah. that if you're doing all of this external fundraising that you're not asking the city for, you're generating revenue for the city, which means that probably you deserve a raise, right? Probably your team maybe deserves a, raise a couple of years ago, but like, yeah, I agree with you. I think the priorities <laughs> of what they say and what they do are a lot different. Well, I'm just saying, I'm affirming my commitment to be a louder advocate for us, if okay. need be. 
So I'm sure, and I'm sure that all of you on the call would, would join me in that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I think that that's ludicrous that we asked for $5,000 increase. And I think, I think one of the most interesting things that came out of that, those uh, budget meetings that I heard was that in fact, the budget can be adjusted during the course of the year. So I think there's no reason not to try to make a case Danielle, I think, you know, and Brian, I think it's well worth us thinking of, of should, can, is there a case that we could make for the expenditure of a better use of expending uh, funds in the city um, that, would, that would be in support of the arts and other aspects of cult, the culture of the city? I think it's worth considering. Especially as our projects have been moving towards ones that really are aimed at the <laughs> services. Like, especially like if we're doing relief grants, if we're doing projects that focus on intersectionality, if we're doing projects that focus on centering Black and Indigenous artists, like these are things that are being called for. And like, if no other departments are able to meet that need that our community is really loudly asking for, then, then yeah, it should be reflected in the budget and we can also advocate as private citizens to, at city council meetings and it doesn't actually need to come from Brian. <laughs> Cause like, that's like a crazy power dynamic too. Like if your job is on the line, like you shouldn't necessarily be the one to always be pestering and advocating, but like we can do some of that for you. And you just tell us what it is that you need. Well, yeah, we'll speak to our uncle Frankie. <laughs> I like to advocate for as much arts funding as possible, but I think, uh, in my personal opinion, as a as a private citizen, I feel like there's a lot of other um, a bigger need. I think for homeless um, addiction and uh, mental health. Uh, mental health issues, yeah. Like a, a a huge municipally funded center that could provide like a community center that could provide a lot of different services, such as that. I know there's a lot of different like um, kind of partnerships with different organizations, but I feel like that would be something that would definitely mm -hmm. set yeah. our mentality uh, apart from a lot of different others to come up with some kind of place like that. Um, Brian, do you know anything about about that project with that that Dennis, Dennis Bidwell is involved in and that whole initiative? What, what project is that, uh, Freeman? What's it called, the Resiliency Center? Is that, is that what it's called? Mm, who's the person that's involved in it? Dennis well, Bidwell. Dennis Bidwell, who's a former city councilor. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Dennis Bidwell, yeah. Um, I mean, apparently, I mean, I know this because I'm involved with this group, Northampton Connects, and, and oh. a lot of those people are were very well connected, unlike myself. Um, and, and, um, Apparently, there are a lot of different people talking about this very thing that you were just mentioning, the center, um, and trying to find us an actual physical space. It needs to be an entire building, like, to, and it needs to be close to downtown, and it needs right. to be accessible, yeah. and it needs to be like accessible to everybody, and it needs to be set up for free. It needs to have municipal, local, state, and federal funding. Right. You need to have somebody like Dennis Bidwell with the like deep pockets and deep connections to, right. to run that place and and get people that are allies in there that can definitely do the outreach. So that's I, I didn't know about that project, but I'll take a look a look around. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I'll see if I can get I'll I'll reach out to Dennis and see if he can send you whatever information he has. He was a supporter of the, the Arts Council, the, his time on the City Council, so I could always count on him for, you know, board votes. The, the, the right now, I, you, Danielle, you probably know the City Councilors better than I do right now. And from your, from your work uh, that you've been doing advocating for our community, because there's been a big turnover um, in the last couple of years, and I, the only person I know is Bill Dwight still on City Council? And I know Josh yes. Thorpe and Bill Dwight. Um, those are people I've had conversations with and I kind of have a sense of. And the rest Jim of Nash. Do you know well, Jim Nash? He's my person, but he's- I know on. Jim Nash. I, I, I don't really get a good vibe from Jim Nash. Well, yeah, me, he's kind of, okay. Um, 
And then I know Alex. I, you know, you know Alex. I don't know Alex. I know he was just elected. Elected. And that was a big coup, which is cool. Yeah, he's a good guy. Okay. And Thought, very, very thoughtful. Good. Good. Go ahead, Rachel Maiori. Um, I think she's out in Leeds. Is, okay. But she's been a really awesome advocate. What is what is her what is her name? Rachel Maiori. I haven't heard of her. Interesting. I like the good camera to meet. Yeah. She yeah. She's been an awesome. And Sorry? is Emma Barge still on City Council? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Her. Dennis. Freeman, do you know? Who? Who replaced Dennis? Uh, I, don't Dennis. I, hmm? I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't remember. That's my award. Oh, four? Up by Crescent Street? Yeah. No, that's um, there's QA, right? There's the sommelier. He's a he's like a a dad. He's a sommelier. Um, I can't remember his name, but he's really great too. He's very thoughtful. Quinlan, um, I oh, think okay. it's today. And then there's Karen For Forster or Forrester. I don't know. Um, I guess I gotta go to the city council and make a presentation or something. Yeah, God, I don't know. Gotta remind them that I, that we exist. <laughs> Maybe we can, Brian. What if you invite them on a, a public art tour, a socially distanced public art tour through downtown to highlight some of the projects that we do. What I do. Uh, we could do more of if we get more funding. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be nice to have a public art uh, line in the budget. So maybe I will. Yeah. Have my, have Especially my as we think about like as we transition to having most people spending time outdoors. Yeah. If that's going to continue to be a goal as we move through pandemic, yeah. then maybe we think about even ways to like spread it out throughout the town. So it's a way to yeah. decentralize the main street downtown. Think yeah. about. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a public health service yeah, as well. I think it's those are really good points. I have uh, Peter McQuillan, our our production assistant. He's doing a uh, mm -hmm. um, he's auditing all the available wall space. I have him creating a database. Um, and then I've had Ramiro, who was our consultant on the Public Arts Festival. He's mm -hmm. like updating the mm -hmm. cultural district map that I'm working with him on to include mm -hmm. all the public art in downtown. Uh, as well. So those are some more public art points. Um, so that's kind of that with that. And then I emailed you guys a proposal kind of last minute. I've been working with Amelia to get that together and get that information together and get that proposal. And um, so I wanted to share that. We don't have a quorum. We can't vote on it, but I wanted to get some input from people. I'm trying to find a wall and I'm giving her contacts to the building owners. And I'm just trying to f help foster her along this process so we can get the permission, we can get the, the uh, per permission from the building owner, we can get permission from the city, and then we can get the, the, the mural funded. Um, so, you know, you guys are the Arts Council Board. You have you had a chance to read the proposal yet uh, and take a look at the proposed um, artwork. That's only the proposed, go ahead. Can you just take us back to where this came from where this germinated from uh, from somebody from emailing emailing me and asking uh they were really interested in doing this he also so i don't know if folks on this call are familiar with 413 stay woke stay active it's a facebook group for local activists and organizers it was started by um a teacher and a social worker based in holyoke who organized the holyoke black lives matter march they're phenomenal organizers like incredible um just to throw that in so they started this facebook group as a way to like bring people together and um do some teaching and do some learning and and um signal boost different things that are happening for black lives matter all around the valley um and amelia actually posted this idea saying that she wanted to do a black lives matter art project in that group and i've been talking to her a little bit too it doesn't necessarily come through in the proposal but every, there are dozens of people involved in crafting the proposal that have all come from that Facebook group who have all come out for these protests. So I've, I've encouraged her to like list out her in-kind donations in the forms of all of these different kinds of support because she has really built a coalition of artists, organizers, marketers, writers, like all different kinds of people that are weighing in and like gonna activate the project. 
So like when we think to think about project feasibility, she has a team and like, it mm. seems like they're doing awesome, awesome work. Right. Um, and that's aside from like the concept and the design, which we should totally discuss, but she, mm. they'll execute the project without a problem and especially with support from Brian and this team. Um, so uh, the design is not the final design either. It was one of the um, artists that are one of the coalition members. It was the first um, design that they discussed. It's not going to be the how it's executed either because there's other artists involved. It was one of the coalition oh. members that came up with the proposal and it was the first design they had. And I wanted to have some kind of Im image, image to show everybody of mm -hmm. kind of the direction they're going in. They have another um, younger artist who's about 13. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I have her name, if you give me one second, um, in here. Mm -hmm. But they're waiting for a design from her. Uh, let's see, that artist design that we got is Mars. Mm -hmm. From Mars. So. Um, I don't have the, it's in my, in my email chain, but so it's an interesting thing to like have a younger artist maybe with their proposed design so we can get younger people engaged in our city um mm -hmm. that's what yeah so brian th this is a, a design for a wall someplace downtown yeah there i put some walls in there or the amelia had some and i had some other ideas uh for, for places where i know the building owners and i know there's a blank wall and i know they mm -hmm. maybe want a mural on and the two that i added were the provisions wall um and the thorns market because i know i've spoken to the owners and there's been interest in the past mm -hmm. the ones that um the projects are were interested in were the wall and the side of Fitzwillie's, our toasted owl that faces mm -hmm. the bridge, and then the local burger wall. Mm -hmm. So I've given the, the team, Amelia's team, direct contact to all the owners of those buildings so she can request. Are, are any of these people in the, in the key artists, are there anybody from Northampton? Oh, here, here's one. Oh, Julian is, oh, he's a former. Is anybody involved in Northampton connected? I am. Um, hey, Gabriel has shown at APE Gallery, and I believe they're based in Hadley, but has at various times been in Northampton and shows here often. Okay, they show, but they don't live in, in this town. Okay. It seems like they also have been underscoring the fact that it's a collaborative project. So mm -hmm. I know Brian named a few black mm -hmm. artists and artists of color that have been working on the public art blocks. So mm -hmm. I'm certain that like if we did want to invite more local artists, like it seems as though this group would be totally open to having yeah. um, help with execution when when the project is actually happening. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they'd even be open to community members participating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even if they're not professional artists, they think mm -hmm. that they really want lots of buy-in and are open to feedback and support from everyone. Yeah, I think, I think that, um, you know, the budget definitely needs some work, you know, and it'd be good for them to list that in kind, like you were talking about, Danielle. <clears throat> I'm also thinking that, you know, they, in the discussion about the project, they talk about um, the purpose and the value of this and engaging the community in, in a, a potentially uncomfortable conversation. And I do think that um, it would be a really good idea to have a component built into that for that conversation mm -hmm. to, to be part of the proposal as well mm -hmm. with the public. Because I think, um, yes, it's powerful to have a work of art up that represents something, but I think it's more valuable if it's also, there's also a conversation mm -hmm. around it um, and uh, multiple opportunities for a conversation around it. So, I, you know, I would just try to figure out how to help them incorporate that into the, mm -hmm. the proposal. Because I think it's, you know, clearly it speaks to a need the community has spoken for. Um, 
but I think it would be great if we could, if we could um, put a context mm -hmm. to the work mm -hmm. as well. Any other uh, input? Um, I, I, I didn't know where it came from. I was curious about that, you know, just that this sudden like one single proposal for uh, something. But um, yeah, I thought it was well written. And I'm glad to hear there's other um, designs because I not, I, I don't, I don't like this. Um, I'm not loving the design. So I'm glad to hear there's other, you know, designs being presented. I also had some concerns about the design. Um, I think the explanation, like the explanation doesn't really match up with what I'm seeing. And I get that they're really going for an intersectional approach. I think that's awesome. I think they want to underscore Black Lives Matter. Awesome. But I, you don't automatically get that without lots of like tools to read the symbolism when you look at the design. Yeah. So yeah. I think like, the, like some constructive feedback we might offer is like, how do you underscore intersectionality and Black Lives Matter a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more literally, or um, maybe just choose one set of symbolism, right? Because like there's a lot of symbolism in that mm -hmm. design. And I think it would be maybe useful to even have Black Lives Matter as part of the text of, of the design. Like that seems like a reasonable component and maybe others are working on that, um, that aspect. But I think that feels a little bit important and missing so far. Yeah, I agree. I think text might uh, really help. But I'm not sure what I want to say. So I just, again, I'm, I'm just thinking about how one proposal popped up. So do we not open it up for proposals then? Is it okay for us to entertain this one proposal? Oh, this is not a funding proposal. I just, um, um, I just gave Amelia one of our applications um, okay. to use it as a tool to explain this project she wants to do. We're not. This is not a funding ask for eight thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. It's basically like a public art project that a bunch of private citizens want to do. And we're trying to engage them and like approve the design because we have an ordinance because there's an arts council ordinance saying we have to like deem something art and then give uh, give it permission to be put up. So I was basically just presenting it and showing it to the board because I'm going to definitely help them raise money outside of our board. It's not I told her about we have competitive grants that we you know we we may be like be able to have an ink board meeting and talk about having like a special, you know, grant or something to help start yeah. it. But um, I mean, the idea that Danielle uh, proposed to the group was like a GoFundMe and, you know, and there's also me, I'm going to offer, you know, I've been getting some responses from summer concert series of people that are changing their, their funding um, priorities to projects like this. So, I'm going to be more than happy to like engage, you know, connect the funder with their project. So we're, this is kind of more of like a fostering Ellen um, okay. of this project. And uh, um, if, it, if it was, uh, it's my, my, uh, it's my miscommunication with how it was presented. I just thought that our grant application is a really good way to communicate to us because we're used to reading all those applications. Okay, so you wanted to give them some structure. And, okay. I wanted the, the, the proposal to have structure and it. I think our, our application is a really good tool for anybody to have if they're producing anything. Like there's a budget, there's a mission, there's like an execution piece in there. And again, it's like we're literate in these grant applications. So for anybody who comes to me now with like a pro project proposal or a public art thing, I'm like, you know, I feel like that's a good, I mean, what I should do is like take that and like retool it into another kind of application for like the public art process, which I plan on doing in the future. So there's less uh, miscommunication to the board on like, what it was going, was going on there. 
But if we all decide that we're like, whatever they come up with and we love the design and we want to like allocate a special amount of money from the ink, I'm, you know, I'm not going to stop that from happening. And I, I, I definitely sent her, um, I gave, you know, statistics of my, our past experiences of like, we usually give out money in the spring and the fall. We usually give out uh, grants between $250 to like six, $1,600 to 35 different applicants. So I set her, 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 okay. her um, expectations to be like, you know, we usually don't fund, fully fund an application. And, but I also told her that like, we might have a, a, a ground of support from the board and there might be like, you know, a special allocation done because we want this, this type of work to be done in our, our city. So, mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, go ahead. A um, couple of things. One, you know, Friends of Northampton Trails has been, has funds to support a mural if it's along a section where there's the trail. Yep. We were looking at, uh, you know, the um, Florence paint building uh, along the trail here in Florence. The owner there uh, has apparently given permission to, mm -hmm. to come up with a design um, for cool. that wall. That might be um, nice. So, Bye. Bye. So that's another potential mm -hmm. um, source of, of funding. Because we've, we've got some funding to, to well, spend. And you know, it would be nice to have something in Florence like this. Yeah, I would, I would love that to be there. I mean, especially given the history of Florence. Mm, right. So yeah. I have a proposal, but there is another um, sort of, there's an artist who's interested in convening murals specifically on the bike path. And I had emailed Brian and Freeman about it. Um, she she's similarly looking to like basically commission black and indigenous artists who are local to do stuff along the bike path namely like in response to the fact that there's been so much graffiti there so i'm not sure if she's thinking specifically on the trail or if that's permitted or like walls alongside mm -hmm. but um i i'm probably going to connect her to amelia and like the folks working on this project because maybe it becomes like a larger initiative that they're doing together um and then I would advocate from like our, the little tiny segment of the equity committee that we have um, to have a line item specifically for like equity projects, art projects. And like, we don't need to say specifically Black Lives Matter because maybe one day that won't be the thing that needs attention drawn to it. But like, I think right now it is the thing. So I, I would totally propose that and based on whatever that you think seems reasonable, Brian whether it's like something from our grant, something from LLC, well, I, I don't know. I think I'm, well, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, worried about our revenue streams because our two biggest revenue streams are ticket sales and, and sponsorships. So until I, and it's like, I have to wait until we can do trans performance and first night, but I have to come up with different ways to get revenue streams. And I guess, you know, I've never had to ask for operating income like that. So I have to come up with some different ideas so I feel more comfortable because, you know, I was talking to Kathy Murray, who's our treasurer before that we, you know, we might have to make uh, some different changes to our staff because if I'm not producing events, I don't need, a, you know, I don't need a full-time arts events producer. Wow. You know, maybe I need a half-time one or I have to figure out how our budget, you know, for this year. Uh, I'm, I was going to bring this up in new business. Yeah, yeah. Going on with our budget. Yeah, but we're you know we're talking about like you know allocation now. We can talk about you know that too. So moving forward, but uh, one of the right. project proposal it's due course, and I think um, everybody's if you have more input, but we should share some of these comments with Amelia, and uh, I'm going to still keep on working with her. Yeah. Hopefully they'll have a little bit more time to put like type the proposal in the budget and uh, actual proposed artwork, and we can present it either at the next board meeting or a little earlier at like a, a, a different board meeting that we can call a little uh, in between now and August if we need to. So, um, well, and that's the reality, and that, that I'm glad that you're sharing this with all of us in terms of you know it, it is. I mean, it's the reality. It is. It's, it's, I so 
Um, we can move. I don't know if we want to talk about the public art anymore, or we can we can move on from there to the next board issue, so we can talk about these other issues. But does anybody have any more input for? Uh, Input on the public art proposal by Amelia Ditkoff. All right, okay. we can move on. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's great that you are at least we're supporting and hopefully we'll be able to kind of be able to help and and how she or uh, the group seems seems that we can best be of assistance to them. Yeah, you know, Brian, Brian, I've been thinking a lot about you know not just in the context of the Council for the Arts, but a lot about, um, you know, what's the follow up to all the demonstration to all the signs, the Black Lives Matter signs and, and how easy it is for that to kind of slip into, you know, uh, kind of the background. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what really meaningful action can happen now quickly, you know, in priority. And I feel like that's a really important thing going forward. Uh, it's great that the the legislature, the state legislature, passed the, you know, the legislation. At least the Senate voted on the legislation for, you know, um, uh, regulating police behavior somewhat. I thought that was a good sign. But but the one of the nice things about the public art, this particular project, is that it could be done fairly quickly. Yeah. And I think yeah. there's something to say about that. You know that that you know, it's not just words then that will disappear and people will go back to some kind of normal. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that's a positive. I think it's worth, definitely worth, and it's very timely and it's, it would be great for us to figure out a way to help them yeah, make this I'm gonna, happen. I'm gonna figure it out. I have to do, you know, I'm doing the taxes for last year with the, the accountant tomorrow and then I'll have a meeting with Kathy Murray about our budget and how what we can do to be flexible. And then um, I'll, you know, I'll come up with some kind of like projected budget for FY21. And then I'll like get some input from some other people um, on our board for possible fundraising suggestions besides ticketing events. Um, that's mostly what my background has been and you know, in my, my experience. So I've, I have, I have other experience asking money other ways, but it's like, I just feel more comfortable when I'm working for the money and as, as opposed to just asking hat in hand. So it's just, I have to right. make investments, you know? Um, so I'm really excited about getting this mural done. Um, as soon as I have a more, uh, tighter grip of like what the budget is going to look like, I'd love to talk to the ink about maybe allocating some money to it. Um, but I'm going to be like out there stumping and getting um, Amelia the connection she needs and the contacts she needs to, and help her start a GoFundMe campaign because, you know, the equity committee did that one for our artist relief. I mean, the grant committee did the artist relief fund and we have some experience with that. And I think they'll be easily be able to raise $9,000 and community do something like that, especially with the activism that is uh, on Facebook and there are everybody's connections there. I think they'll be easily raised. So. Um, so, Brian, on that note, I wonder if it would make sense for, like, this is just an idea and we don't have to do it, but, like, what if we ran the GoFundMe? That's fine. And hey, Steven. Like, then whatever money we raise from that project could go, like, from that GoFundMe campaign could go directly to the project. And if there's anything left over, we could say that we're allocating it to projects that are responding to Black Lives Matter. And like it could potentially go we, to we couldn't, we'd have to so when you've raised money it, it, it either has to be for general operating or for a specific project so that's a good idea but we'd have to say we'd be like we like right from the beginning it'd be, have to be like we're like raising equity money okay we couldn't, we couldn't say it's just you know we can't say we're doing this like mural project and then take the money and like use it for something else but we could say that we're raising equity money and then the first project that we hope to fund within that line item would be this. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. I kind of like the I, idea of raising equity money. But so the, the other thing is that then 
I'm not against this. It does it definitely changes because we, you know, we have to raise money for trans performance and first night as well. So right. whether it's creating like donor, what is it called? Like uh, our asking our keep on asking our donors. Donor fatigue. Yeah, that's what I'm like. Donor fatigue for like the multiple asks. Cause I just asked a bunch of our donors for some money for summer concert series, and I'm not even asking for much usually. So if we're still in the public art thing, but I'll just just it's summer park series like summer concert series is like uh, public art in some kind of way, right? So and this is municipal side anyways. So I was working for about two and a half weeks on. Um, protocols for social distancing for summer summer park series in Pulaski Park and we're gonna have these small shows and uh and I was getting I got everything ready and then in like the last minute last Friday it, the plug got pulled by the mayor's office in the department of health so now I pivoted and now I'm, we're just doing um live stream shows from 33 Holly uh the small studio room uh the same dates and I, I, so I didn't even ask for money before I knew that. So everything's last minute anyways. And that's, so if that just got pulled because of the way like COVID-19 numbers are going nationally and internationally right now, I'm worried about, you know, Look Park's a different thing than Pulaski Park. It's, it's a controlled space. Um, I'm just worried about us taking an event, so of just switching it up, and then there's the ask. But I think us being a pass through for that mural is something that we can definitely do, and I'm more than happy to do that because it's a quick thing. But I, I guess I'm also wondering if there's a way to structure the language flexibly. I mean, even if we even if we say it's general operating, and then like once we have it within general operating, could we use it to fund a special project, or does that just go towards? salaries and other expenses. If it's just general operating, we can do whatever we want with it. If it's just like we're raising so then, for the Arts Council, we can do whatever we want with the money, you know? So then maybe we can name, I don't know if that feels right, because like if you're not able to do ticketed trans performance, if it was a, like just in case we're not able, like who knows if we're able. If I'm we pretty did, sure we can do it if this, if we stay in phase three and we can do it with a limited, limited, limited audience. Um, so we can probably get around a thousand people or like less into Look Park, but I don't know. That's the problem with like projecting a budget is like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's why my job right now is like, I don't know if we can do first night. I know that the Academy doesn't want us there on first night, but the Academy is not the only venue. So why do they not want us there? Uh, because I think the, there yeah. is, a, go ahead. Well, I'm sure it has to do with, um, you know, making sure things are clean, cleaning people out. I mean, if they're responsible, and I know there has to be it, I'm not sure in the public spaces, but I know we, we canceled the jazz festival because, it, you know, having six feet around and, and making, and the policing per se, and I hate to use that word, but making sure that people are, are you know, having masks on or following rules, you know, the rules in terms of being safe, um, in, in terms of public health is, is a real, is overwhelming. And if the academy, you know, they'll have, they, they probably have to clean everything out be, in between each performance and trying to do that in that certain time period um, is just, it's un, unbelievable. I couldn't imagine doing it. So I'm sure it has to do with just in terms of the public, public health and how to keep things clean. Yeah. It's Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, from my perspective as a board member of the academy, and from what I got from the the, the last the board meeting is that it, it's they could probably close and do all their renovation project projects and have more money at the end of the COVID nineteen than if they kept it open and did all those protocols that Kathy just talked about. I think they're gonna run. They're gonna run in the red if they try to produce any events there, specifically one that is like, you know, ours, which is doesn't get a lot of rent for them. Right. Um, and, I, you know, under phase four, it's if we even make it to phase four, it's a possibility by December 31st, but it's again, where I'm dealing with like something that may or may not happen. They're under phase three, I think the capacity of the Academy is 800, so they can maybe fit 200 in there. 
Yeah, that's what they they told us. It was like two two hundred two fifty, and it wasn't for us at the arts. I mean, the jazz festival it just wouldn't be fiscally feasible. I would be fine with it, but like Kath, uh, Deborah, like would not say it in the board meeting, but just told me by email that she wouldn't. She's not having the academy open for for first night, but she'll have like I, I had to like raise a pretty big sting at the board meeting because she's gonna have like DSP in there for live stuff, their own oh, their yeah. own productions. And then like Sig Sounds and like they're gonna do other stuff there, but she's not willing well, to. Then that's not right. It's she won't say that in the board meeting or publicly, but I, that's the gist of what like what I got. So I'll I'll wait and see how it goes. But from a perspective of like financing, like I would close the academy until everything blows over because they're sitting on a half a million dollars. They have all these renovation grants coming in, and it's like. They don't have to have their staff. They can furlough their staff and then like do a bunch of work that they need to do and then not open. So if that's the case, they should just say it and do it as opposed to like, you know, oh, this one's okay and this one's not okay. And I'm like, you're, well, you're a public theater. You have to be open to everybody. It's not just, you can't pick your renter. Right. So Good point, Ryan. that was my stunk. I stink that I, I voted nay on her projected budget because she was projecting. Yeah. I like. I it was a big long discussion and and yeah. some of her, some of it got aired on the board meeting last month, so that was good. Um, but I I'm not hopeful that the academy will be open for it, and I don't know what you know. Every venue that we count on that is either free or like low cost or like churches and all these smaller yeah. places, um, it's going to be under phase three restrictions it's going to be pretty difficult so hopefully i would um so i've been i'm sorry just to i've been de dealing with a few clients that have usual events during the year and like you know we're looking and they're forecasting for what they're going to do for the fall and such and one thing that, that's like a common trend is even though like say if phase three does happen or whatever that doesn't mean that people are going to come out and they're not expecting people to come out for them uh so they're we're erring more and more on the side of alternate planning. I mean, and so I've been thinking about that in terms of like, what would first site be? What could an alternate to transfer forms be? Although that's like an, you know, a month and a half ish. So that's like almost impossible to try yeah. to figure out, but like what are alternative ways of doing something? Because the old way will most likely not be right. feasible or profitable in these fundraising instances. So I just, right. I would just throw that out there that like, even if we're in phase three, doesn't mean that a lot of people will come out, especially during that time when it'd be like fluish and like they're thinking that had we done everything we should have done and been in the second wave scenario, that's when it would have happened. So I would just, just think about like, what can we do alternatively, yeah. you know, assuming yeah. that we won't get like the crowds that we would get. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. I, I agree. Cause even if you, if things are open, are you going to get the crowd of people? Yeah. And I was going to say that, if there's an uptick in cases in the fall as expected and you know going into the winter i sadly i don't i don't see first night in our normal way happening this year yeah. well as it is now i think that trans performance is going to happen uh but with a lot more restrictions um that's my conversation with look park and i'm gonna get way ahead with the board of health after we launch summer summer concert series live stream style mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and let us know, Brian, because I mean, I can just see, you know, for trans performance talking about, I mean, even feeding the performers backstage and getting people backstage and having people so close. To I'm not going to have any PTOs there. We're going to, I'm just going to hire three food trucks who are used to serving like this already. Okay. And they're going to feed everybody. Like I'm going to, I'm going to do a whole, it's going to be not like what we're used to. Right. Um, right. You have to cordon off little little um, spaces for- I'll for just people. get some some paint that I use in soccer to paint lines and I'll just be like, this is where people can sit and I'll make little circles. Yeah, so um, things like that. And then in terms of, of um, monitoring. You know, yeah, monitoring. where I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna tap into the first night list and get a, a b bunch of volunteers. It just creates a lot more of like a difficulty for me. Yeah. My idea for first night is to like take over 33 Holly and then just do like a Jerry Lewis telethon. Like I'll, me and Steve will be hosting all night. We'll like get create like an old phone thing we'll build and people can call in and make donations and donate online. And we'll have like 
all the performers that we've had and we'll just have to like schedule them in a different rooms and then we'll have Northampton open media like we'll be in Eli's room we'll be in like the 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 this flex space we'll be in the, the mezzanine a new performance will start and then we'll like that's the idea I have right now to, yeah. to have like a lot um, of and like like the public that like the public TV stations and, stuff and things like that. Uh, yeah. You, like, would they be game for like saying, "Here, use our space for the night"? Like. Yeah. No, or... that's that's the whole. They like we would do anything we do with like live stream. We're doing with Northampton Open Media. Right. Um, and have... like, okay. Yeah. Oh no, no, I was just gonna say like, are like are you picturing that it's a solely like you know everybody from their house watches, or yeah. are you are you picturing like some people can go to some things, you sell like a ticket, and you limit that. 100 because that's all the space allows or no i'm I, so what alan crazy. said and what everybody's afraid about if nothing changes and we don't come up with some vaccine or we don't come up yeah. with some, like killer treatment it's going to be worse this winter than it we've seen so far and right yeah no it, yeah there's not going to be anything in time for new year's there's not going to be any vaccine so I think we'll be able right, to get so into like a transfer live. yeah I, I think we'll be able to get a transfer performance in with like 700 800 people and that's fine. I'm gonna increase the ticket price. I think people, you know, I think there's a lot of people that want to go out and are already go out and might do it still. Um, I think you can get like you know a fair amount of people who would go out, especially yeah. if there's adequate spacing. Um, yeah. Is it too late in the game to get like a streaming thing set up? And we're we're streaming like, everything we do now. Okay. We stream everything we do. But getting those you... for stream okay. stuff is like crazy. Yeah. So yeah. Normally, my headline sponsorship for summer concert series is twenty five hundred dollars, yes. and I'm only asking for two hundred and fifty dollars right now because nobody cares. Are you selling like for like five dollars? You can get the stream link to no. people, like people who can't attend in person or anything. Because like no, okay. it's a free show mm -hmm. hmm. for summer park series, but we can might be able to do it for trans performance. Yeah. Um, but what if you promised to do a, a song or two yourself? I would pay five dollars for that. <laughs> you don't want to sing. It's no. <laughs> like, I'll double a soccer up, like, ball. Elton John and sing Tiny Dancer. I would pay ten dollars. Oh no 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 no! Oh god! Yeah, yeah soccer ball. Yeah. I like that Maybe idea. I'll do it for first night. Maybe we'll have. I'll put together an act for first night. But it's all right. Not for trans I, I, all right. I it's will sponsor that. Please. Brian Foot does yeah. Tiny Dancer. At, you know, right before the ball drops. 100%. I will all right, all right, all right. Does it have to be? Oh, we got him. <laughs> I can't. I, I got to start practicing now. Um, yeah, so uh, we're getting off. So we're, we're kind of like, we should probably close the municipal meetings. I just wanted to talk about public art and that. And it's, you know, obviously nice to always get everybody together. Um, I haven't heard from the LC, from like the MCC yet regarding LCC funds. Um, I think yeah. it will be the same as last thought, year. Okay, okay. So and the public art, uh, we're we're now into the ink. No, we're still in public. We're still, we're in still in municipal. municipal. And right. I wanted to do one more thing about public public art. I'm gonna reach out to um the cultural district, oh, yeah. um <laughs> administrator, uh, and see if they're interested in like having some special allocation of state funds to do a, a mural in downtown Northampton. Okay. Um, they already gave us five thousand dollars, and uh, but I'm gonna see if they can like he can do some special accounting and get us some special mm -hmm. okay. mural too. Where are you thinking the mural would go? Uh, it's in the proposal I shared, and it's um uh, there's a couple different places, and it's all about who gives them permission, Steve. Um, uh, it's their number one is Fitzwillie's the side of Fitzwillie's building, and number two is the side of Local Burger. Mm -hmm. I threw in some comments of like, I know the building owners at Thorns, um, they want a mural and they always, they already reached out to me and want a mural on the back of the Thorns. And then I also gave them Peter Whalen's uh, contacts for the back of provisions. Mm -hmm. So it's whoever can give them um, uh, permission in, at that point, because I don't, and then, you know, we were talking about it before I have Peter, our production assistant doing a, a, an audit of all the different open wall spaces in downtown Northampton. So we'll have a, a nice database of like available kind of like, you know, canvas, yeah. if you will, for public okay. art. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, that wasn't, a, a, a Steve Pedagorski, that wasn't like a proposal for money. I just, I just gave them that format so they could give us information. 
Mm -hmm. And we don't have a, and it was basically the arts ordinance to like basically like say it's public art, they can put it up the design or whatever it, it may be. But I think because we don't have a quorum and their, their design and their proposal still needs a little bit more work that we're gonna list just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help them and Danielle's gonna throw some help to them and we're just gonna help them move along with their proposal and help mm -hmm. them find funding and then get their permission and, and go forward. And then we can vote on the design when it's finalized. Cause that's just one of their, pro their proposal, proposed designs from one of the artists <laughs> out of the 40 people that are collaborating with them. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where we are with that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion to close the municipal meeting? Mm. So moved. Second. Okay. All right. So the ink, you know, it's mostly, uh, I'm getting lots of thank you cards from COVID-19 relief check people mm -hmm. that really, really appreciate it and needed it. And um, mm -hmm. I got a nice one from David Brewster today uh, with a nice little picture and David Brewster. David Brewster. I don't know. I think he's a, I don't know. He has a studio in the, the arts and industry building. He's oh, like, I know him. He's, he's knows Annie. Yeah. Oh, I know him and his partner. Oh, uh, yeah. In Vermont. Yay. I just got one today. So that was nice. And, and so the artist community, I think, really appreciates all of our work getting them that, that those funds. Um, so there's that. And then, um, Summer concert series. So we're in the ink thing, kind of musical ink. Tried to put it in the Pulaski Park, didn't work. We're doing live streams. They start on Friday night, um, 6 p.m. to 7.30. Uh, the first uh, concert is Matali Banda. Um, I don't know if people are familiar with him. Um, excellent artist. Uh, I'm, we've worked with him before. Uh, I'm friends with his manager from the past and uh, and it's really and we just started working with him last first night and I'm really excited to present with Tali and it'll be in 33 Holly and Eli's room it'll be the arts production staff his band and then Northampton Open Media a staff member from there and we'll be doing a live stream and we'll be we'll be live streaming on our Facebook and then Northampton Open Media will be live streaming on YouTube. Um, I'll have a donation link up for people. Um, I'm also getting some support from um, some headline sponsorship money. Uh, the Gazette gave us $500. Um, and then uh, Saluzniak Funeral Home, uh, UMass Five College Credit Union. Uh, who else came through today? A couple other people. And then the city gave us $5,000. So we'll be able to take care of that. And I think that's cool. Um, next week, we're going to have um, Kamaya Diggs. And then mm -hmm. and, uh, the week after that, we're going to have this uh, psych rock band called Kareen A. So mm -hmm. we're just doing three short and sweet. And then we're going to be able to focus on like really um, dealing with audience uh, at trans performance and getting a really like comprehensive plan. I already have like a three page plan with a waiver set up for summer park series that I was going to use, but I'm just going to retrofit that for look park. I've been in contact with look park as well. Um, we're not going to involve the PTOs this year. Um, again, I'm just going to try to hire like three food trucks. I have to see if there's anybody even available. Um, but I'm trying to try to cover the, the basic food groups of trans performance, which are pizza, burrito and ice cream. <laughs> so I'm hoping like Bart's I'm hoping for a Bueno Isano truck because I'm because Vera has not oh. paid me for last year and I'm gonna hope for the um um the uh the lovely people who make pizza at Tuesday Market Sue and um oh yeah so I'm gonna those are my hopes and maybe they can donate like portions of their proceeds to transfer hormones. I'm thinking about making the ticket a little bit like $5 more than last year, just because of the smaller audience. Um, and then pairing everything down, we're going to have a little less bands. So there's more social distancing backstage. Um, okay. And it's going to be definitely live streamed. And if it doesn't work out, we're just going to do it. It's like, and we did bit like live aid, just like the 1985 concert. 
So that's the theme this year. I don't know if you're familiar with that, anybody. They did like three stages um, and a big international fundraiser. So it'll be similar. Um, yeah. Okay. That's about it for our fundraising efforts. I'm going to have a meeting with Kathy Murray about F FY21 budget and projections to see, to get realistic about what we're going to look at without having a, uh, um, as much revenue as we did last year. Mm. And, and um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else. What is anything else on the, I have on the agenda that no. we need to discuss? Well, one of the things I know, and we, and I was just as guilty, we were chatting about um, board development or um, some of the, uh, the issues around um, getting more people on our on either board, you know, trying yep. to whistle people up. And, and I mean, I don't, you know, we can always go to look at the volunteer list, but yeah, I don't know, you know, it, should Kathy uh, Murray, you and I meet and talk about it or? You yeah, know? we could, I think it's like, we could be new business right now. I think that's a, that's a definitely a nice line on our new business of getting, of getting people to come on the board. Yeah. Um, uh, I have somebody reach out and I interviewed them and Freeman also did. Where did Freeman go? Is he here? Yeah, it's Ron. Yeah. So who is, um, who is that person you were saying in terms uh, of? Matthew Vanderslice. He's a illustrator and like kind of like a, a branding, like graphic designer type of person. How do you spell his last name? B B A N D E R S L I C E. Oh, just like it sounds. Okay. Yeah. And then I think the mayor's office gave him a call today and then he's going to okay. go forward. So there's another okay. board member, but I, we need more board members. Like, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're yeah. more active people. So uh, yeah. I think, I mean, go yeah, ahead. It, to get some, you know, people also, you know, as, as we we're talking about a little bit more, I mean, we always mention this in terms of diversity, but trying to, I mean, where, because unfortunately, you know, we're, we're, you know, trying to find people and, and trying, you know, in the usual spots and maybe reaching out places. I just, I'm as a, as an old person here, I'm just not certain, I mean, aware of or or, um, you know, I'd look to, to somebody else to kind of help out in that area. I'm happy to do that outreach. Would be great, Danielle. I would really appreciate but it. I think one of the problems is that the people we want on the board are not going to be able to be on the board for free. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, I know, like, listen, I know we can't pay board members, but um, I just want to be like mindful of that ask. I know it's not a huge time commitment, but if people have families, if people work multiple jobs, um, right. it's, right. a big, it's a big ask. Um, so I'm happy, like, I don't know if there's an existing like solicitation text about like recruiting board members, but if there's like, I'm happy to get on a Google doc with you, Kathy and Brian to- That would be great. Around like welcoming folks to the board, naming that we're like particularly in need of um, like folks who have a background in dance or if someone is black or POC and, and wants to share their perspective on that front, like right. we're especially interested in, in those candidates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think we just need to be prepared that not a, like folks who are struggling may not, well, and, and not to say that everyone who's black or, or a dancer would be struggling. Like I know that's not the case either. No. But you're right. I think that some of the people that are, you know, were in terms of that, but it, it, it's, it's the reality. I mean, it is. And I can appreciate you, you saying that, coming out and stating it. Um, I can ask uh, my, to my uh, tenants downstairs, um, you know, they're, they're sort of, um, you know, connected with the world of, of trans, et cetera. So maybe that might be, a, uh, I could, in fact, I could talk to to um, Zoe about if, if she knows of anybody that might be interested. In. And I think I've kind of suggested to them at one point because they're poets, et cetera, that may, maybe you would like to be on the Arts Council board. <laughs> how, Not about that I, just, how about our brightest minds of good at marketing? We draft a document and ask of like, we need a board member. Mm -hmm. Check out our onboarding booklet if you're interested yeah. in like 
giving more time and I'll just like email it to our volunteer yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think the other thing, what are, what are people, I mean, besides, I mean, you obviously the altruistic and the part of benefiting the whole, you know, the city, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, in reality, if you're interested in the, I mean, what is you, for you as an artist, what can being on a board like this do for you? I mean, that's the reality too, you know, in terms of making connections, seeing how, how, um, you know the, the 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 mechanics of how things work, and you know how to, and how to kind of maneuver, th navigate through the systems of these big bureaucracies, and and uh, you know that that to me is like is valuable in terms of, of for for ever, for a single artist in terms of Agreed. figuring out the, the system. I mean, it is. I mean, we all know we live in a place, but how can we kind of figure this out? And, and But it is making connections is really essential to artists. They work in such a solitary situation for the most part. I can see that as being, a, you know, was, doing something for them. I was talking to my husband about this mm -hmm. um, after our last meeting and mm -hmm. He suggested maybe also, and I think I'll we'll call her um, talking to Gwen Agna. Oh yeah, she Gwen. Put a, a tremendous amount of outreach into the communities. Mm. Um, just as a She'd be great, yeah. She's I'd like to work on this. I think this is a, okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's something. I mean, it could be a little subcommittee. I mean, I'd be willing to work with you. Maybe we can even ask and ha ask when. I mean, I know she's busy, you know, even though she's just retired, but this could be a little community of, of something that, because we always get people from outside the, you know, just to be on a, a time limited committee or something like yeah, that. Yeah, her ideas. She's a good idea person. Yeah, she's great. But with um, what about Danielle's expertise? Pardon? In there with Danielle's expertise. Yeah, that would be great. I think maybe just a group of us, like a four or five of us working on that together. That would be excellent. Uh, maybe the this new public mural, public art mural will be a really good place for us to work with people that are interested and recruit from there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. me, when I was younger, it was like the idea of like, I can make a difference in like, yeah. I can like uh, realize and like, you know, like you said, like understand the workings and like enact change. And that's what, yeah. what got me to want to volunteer um, when I was, you know, 25, 26 years old. Yeah, yeah. So. right. And I think that's it. When you understand what's going on, you know how to kind of maneuver and make things work. I mean, yeah. that's, that's what it's about. And then change, making change. It's so, I mean, it, it, it I think it, it just you know what? We can make T-shirts when we get the new logo, and you know, and then we'll you get a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. How about that, Amy? Yeah. Like that? You get a T-shirt when you're on the board. I you well, know. I think it would be great if we get our logo and make face masks with a logo on it. <laughs> Ooh, good idea. Good idea. Well, I just did that for Riverside Industries. I'd want their T-shirts. I thought that was a great idea. I was thinking about toothbrushes, but that's just you know whatever. Everybody, you have to wear your face mask, put your logo on. Were you able to get in touch with the guy making the logo? Uh, yeah, he's just been busy because now he's I got I switched him up to making posters. He's got like three designs that he's working off of, and I can share those with you, Eamon. Um, okay. he, gave me, he gave me like a, a bunch of them, and I like I think I did, pared it down to like three or four that he's working off towards a, a final design, and I'll share those with you um okay and then uh but i don't i i, get, I got them off that because i needed a poster for a summer park series as soon as possible so i could put them on that and i'm getting that tomorrow so okay um do you how just, many OPCs do we have sorry how many OPCs do we have on board how many what oh uh we if we have seven that means we have eight open seats and then matthew would be number eight so maybe we have seven open uh, seats that's a bit yeah um but then we have more people on the municipal board so it's good to have i think good to have about uh, like a total of maybe like 19 or 20 on both boards to make it on both oh boy like, we've never had that many on the municipal we've probably had five at the most i mean ink the ink i mean the ink i'm sorry i think we have like seven or eight on the the, the ink now we do oh well okay um so yeah, let's. I, I'm. I we need as many people. Yeah, we need, need people. Possible. So anywhere you can find somebody who has time, 
and who's motivated and who can add to our wonderful conversation and our decision making and that would be fantastic. Mm. I usually find them, find people like coming in contact with them at different places and like yeah. meeting people in person. And then I'm like, you would be right, great to right. record. Oh, you have the extra well, time. Right. Um, what about that person I, I met at one of the um, art shows. What was her name? Kathy, somebody from UMass and does fundraising stuff. What, whatever happened to her? I don't know. No. I'm sure another, board. another board probably like another board in town probably snatched them up. We have yeah. a lot of arts nonprofit boards that compete with here. And maybe ours uh, is not as glamorous as like, you know, the Academy or like the, the 33 Holly Street board or Northampton Center for the Arts. I've um, never heard that board referred to as glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when you actually have a physical building, it's like a little bit like uh, you have, you know, you have something to show off, you know, to your board. Um, yeah, but then you got to maintain it. And I remember being on the, at the, the Center for the Arts board for 10 years and it was always about how to maintain the space. <laughs> yeah, us is like, we have an ethos, guys. Let's go jump on board to our ethos. Yeah, right. It's so much better. <laughs> it's much more fun. It is much more fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have any ideas, you know, I'll draft the doc right now. I will share it with uh, Danielle and Ellen, uh, basically a recruiting doc. And yeah, then we'll, we'll throw some yeah. stuff in there and then I'll send it to our, <laughs> our volunteer list. And then we'll weed through that. We'll I'll mm -hmm. share all those people's names of people and then we can all have a chat with them. And then mm -hmm. we can pick a couple people out of there. If you know somebody, obviously that would be good. The only right. stipulation is they have to work, live in Northampton, Florence, and Leeds, and be somewhat committed to what we're doing. So, right. do they have to be eighteen or older? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta keep on I keep on forgetting to go <laughs> ask somebody. By the way, I don't I like think they need to be eighteen. <laughs> I don't think they need. I always think Man, about high school. <laughs> that'd be great. I'd love to have a high school student on our board if there's somebody well, that. What about the muralist? Are they from Northampton? No, I think the the person is a, is from like Holyoke or Springfield or something. Yeah, most of them are. Right. I don't think anybody was from Northampton. Um, who did I? Uh, I had that intern for a hot second, but she fell off quick. Oh, I was thinking of um, um, Khalif Neville again. I'm I'm gonna reach out to. Oh him. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I haven't seen. Out, him well. I gotta re remind remind myself about him. Oh. Let's see. I will draft an email to Cleef right Man, now. Man, if only Rashad, I knew somebody who was a jazz musician just got his master's at UMass and that he'd be fun. You know, he's black, he's gay, but he went back home to Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, I lost a lot of cool friends uh, from moving, moving here for a couple of years and then moving yep. back. Yeah, exactly. Right, so I'm gonna put board recruit email, board recruit yeah. email. Um, is there any more, uh, this is, we'll get, we'll get this going. Is there any okay. more new business that people want to bring up? I was going to bring up our finances, but we kind of covered that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to schedule a meeting with a Zoom meeting with Kathy Murray and then, and then I'll finish. I'm going to do the taxes with Bev tomorrow, the form 990, because it was, uh, for the IRS and then, um, I'll get through, I'll have a better idea of what's going on because they're, they're turning over the city right now and I'll have, I'll get all those numbers from there and I'll have a little finance. Uh, my next board meeting, I should have a better picture of what's, what we looking like. Don't and we then, raise money in part for your salary? No. Not for you? No. I'm fully funded by the city. And my budget got approved for next year, so I'm okay so far. What we have to worry about uh, is Steve and Peter's salary. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but then that affects you because then, you know, obviously they're helping you out, so. Then I have to just shift focus again. Like I got to more go from less executive function to more, you know, I, I'm I'm flexible. I'll make it. I'll make uh, I, this will work. <laughs> we'll make it work. You need more board members who will volunteer. Yes, 
Yeah, you know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. drop this email, yeah. and we can get it out, and uh, with some help and input from everybody here, it would be great. Um, so if if there's is there anything else we gotta talk about? Okay. Uh, can uh, who would like to a motion to close the ink meeting? I do. Because I'm an ink. Second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> the only right. two ink people. Oh. <laughs> well, I appreciate again all of your help, and Thank you, uh, it was nice to see everybody's face. And if you need, if anybody needs like, questions or anything like that, just reach out to me. I'm always available. Yeah, you're great. Thank you so much, Brian. Good night, everybody. Good Thank night, you all. Bye. Sorry to be late. Bye. Good night, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.